Nina, fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> NPR's bumpy ride just ahead. It is very clear that we would be better off in the long run without federal funding. NPR would definitely survive, and most of the stations would survive. Uh, that is Ron Schiller, formerly NPR's head of fundraising, caught in a sting at a Washington restaurant by people posing as Muslim, members of a fake Muslim group. They said they were potential NPR donors, which is why he was there. Some members of Congress are ready to take Schiller up on the offer, by the way, and cut off funding. Schiller also had some very unpleasant things to say about the Republican Party and the Tea Party, said they were racist, about Jews. After this story broke, NPR's president and CEO, Vivian Schiller, no relation, resigned. Now, I offered uh, Nina to chance to take the week off. She declined. She wants to defend her company, so you're on. I can't defend the executives, the top executives, and I can't necessarily even defend the board, but I can defend the product. There is a reason that we are the only news organization other than Fox with a growing audience. It's because of our product, which is straight shooting, factual, and spends an enormous amount of money gathering news from all over the country and the world. Judge us by our product. The people in the newsroom were probably more mortified than Charles or anybody in the Tea Party or, or any, any, anybody else. I mean, we were just horrified. And not by the political incorrectness of what he said, but uh, by the fact that he even thought this way, much well, less said. Well, this plays it. right into the belief that you're a bunch of lefties. I know it does, but it's not it. true. <laughs> Charles. Well, all I would say, I mean, I'd want to rehash all the grounds. It obviously is a liberal organization. Obviously, what you're getting is a taste of what people say to each other internally. Everybody knows that. But I have no objection to liberal news organizations. I read the New York Times. Uh, the difference between NPR growing, Fox growing is that Fox isn't holding out a tin cup for taxpayer money. I want NPR to thrive, but not on my dime. Colby? I think NPR ought to take that initiative and say uh, we don't want, want the subsidy. Uh, that Wouldn't that kill some of the stations? It would kill well, a lot I of think stations. Have to, you know, then it's the test of public support. Yeah, we got a market and, and, in the country. And, and we have thousands the of public stations. Will, will step forward. And let's go back to that performance we saw on TV. I mean, it was disgusting. And it was disgusting because he was pandering. He was pandering to get some bucks. And he would say anything to get five million bucks. That's the despicable thing. Mark? There are 934 public radio stations. A lot of them are in very remote and rural areas, and they're the only source of the right. kind of information we're talking about. I mean, really factual, worldwide, great reporting. And uh, they don't have a lot of deep-pocketed patrons like the Upper West Side of Manhattan. What about those rural stations, Charles? I'm deeply moved, but I'd make two points. Number one, I'm not sure why a steelworker in Pittsburgh has to subsidize that. And number two, in a world of a thousand radio stations, a thousand TV stations, internet, satellite, and everything, if they're going to miss out on car talk, there'll be other ways of getting it. It isn't as if we are living in a country as we once were with three network news stations and nothing else, which was a reason why we had PBS in the first place. Yes, and we are now flooded. With, with sources bad information. Of in, with the bad, of course. And <laughs> NPR is, of course, good information, which is why I suppose I should subsidize it, right? The, the reason is, Charles, that in an, in an era when newspapers are disappearing in droves and almost daily, and where actually commercial forces, both in television and radio, have driven out, you know, there's a reason that the NPR has more foreign bureaus than any, any other broadcasting organization I think in this country with a possible exception of CNN more foreign bureaus there's a reason that a big story like BP NPR was the organization you know, that that actually broke the story that the Obama administration was not telling us the truth about the m amount of the leak I mean there we do the job that news organizations used to do and really don't anymore. They're, uh, they're, they're, the, they're covering Charlie Sheen. I think the market comes into the picture as well when you talk about those stations out there, the smaller stations. If there's a legitimate demand for this product, if there's a legitimate demand for this product, they will find a way to get it. Or you market it. That's what you do. You don't, you don't subsidize it. If the, if the British can do it, why can't the Americans do it? The I, BBC. It's an institution that has great personnel working and on the air producing reporting 
and it has had a stewardship that has been singularly counterproductive, ineffective, and harmful uh, to uh, if to if, if the product radio. is so superior, why does it have to live on the tit of the state? Uh, the, the 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 tone with which you defend it is exactly reflective of what we heard in that, this kind of liberal arrogance. It has nothing that to do with it. It has money. You, it has to do with spending news. money. We give you good news. Well, then spend your own money. <laughs> Every other organization from Fox on down and up spends its own. Why do you have access to the taxpayer? To sell, to sell products to children, not to have Sesame Street right. on, not to teach kids, not right. to anything Sesame like, Street. That, let's, well, well, let's, uh, uh, it's not going to have a market. Excuse me for speaking while you're interrupting, Charles. <laughs> but I'd just like to make the point that if you watch children's television, it will, it's mind-numbing in the commercialization of it to try and sell kids. Well, I was, I was, I was on the board of directors of a public television station uh, for, for, for a number of years, and uh, I'd say they do good work. But it's the kind of work that ought to be supported by the market, by the people who watch it. Not by the taxpayer. I, I say this is speaking almost against the interest, but that's the way I see it. I just like to point out that every new other as newspapers fold around the country, people were pointing to NPR as the business model that worked, the one that could actually produce uh, meaningful news. Yeah, if you're subsidized, it works, of course. <laughs> it is. You, you have. You know, you have to have that's some. News? In, in an area where there aren't enough people to support it, you have to have a subsidy. And it deals well, with only as part of the market. I, the I, I'm, I'm, I'm personally a big fan of NPR Supreme Court correspondent myself. Me too. Yeah. I like Me Big too. Bird too. Last word. Thanks. See you next week.